Good morning. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media and also the leader of the Embedded Computing Design Franchise. I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I will be speaking with Mark Shuttleworth, who is the founder of Ubuntu, and he also leads uh, product design at Canonical. Good morning, or in your case, good afternoon, Mark. Good morning, Rich. Delighted to join you. Well, thank you. Okay, so um, the folks at Canonical are big believers in open source software. Um, why is that? What, what's so great about open source? Because we, we certainly know all the bad things about open source. Tell me all the good things and why it outweighs the bad. Well, I think it has always been clear to us that open source would define computing in future generations. Um, and over the last 15 years, that's really what we've seen. Uh, the world today runs on open source. Uh, competence in open source defines competence in operations globally, whether you're running on uh, public clouds, Amazon, or whether you're building IoT devices. Um, in, in almost every significant domain where, where rapid progress is being made, it is Linux and it is open source that, um, that defines the playing field effectively. And there's tons of opportunity um, you know, wrapped around the code, but the sorts of traditional exclusionary licensing type business models just are less and less interesting as we, as we look further and further into the future. Um, that was our view 15 years ago. I think that's certainly um, uh, been borne out if you look at the growth of Linux on, uh, on the public cloud, in devices, in um, pretty much every sphere of embedded computing, um, and increasingly in sort of uh, mobile and um, uh, VR and so on, Linux is the platform. Okay, now you said something in the beginning that I thought was very interesting about um, Competence breed competence, or I, I, um, I think that's the word you used. Um, but unfortunately, there's a lot of incompetence uh, in software development as there is in all aspects of life. Um, so how do you deal with the incompetent part of this where um, it might not just be bad code, it might be uh, un unsecure code? Yes. Um, I think that's super interesting, right? It, with, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, open source does enable people to ship devices very quickly. It enables them to um, uh, modify, manipulate, um, innovate around any aspect of the behavior of a device, for example, in the embedded world. But it then also puts on them the responsibility to maintain that and to do that well. Um, and what, what we see our role in the ecosystem is doing as a, as a platform provider, as, a, as the provider of an operating system that people increasingly are using for devices, is to put them on rails, to make it um, easy to make a device which is secure by default, to make it easy to make a device which receives a stream of updates, to give manufacturers um, and innovators control of that flow of updates while at the same time giving their users access to uh, a, a sort of a commoditized competence effectively. That allows various players each to focus on their core strengths. So if you're making a, uh, a self-driving car, you focus just on the autopilot of the car, not on all of the uh, other sort of infrastructure that you might need to do to ship a whole device. The same is true for you know uh, all sorts of control systems in the IoT, networking equipment, um, uh, you know, and elsewhere where people are innovating with Linux. Okay. Well, it's very clear that Ubuntu is extremely, ex is extremely popular, but um, why should the whole world be turning to Ubuntu? Well, in the embedded space, I think we're seeing a phase change. Traditionally, people really had to strip down the platform to be able to work on the sort of silicon that they were shipping in devices. But increasingly, for the interesting devices, you know, drones on uh, autopilot control systems on drones or um, HVAC systems or light lighting control systems, you have plenty of compute to work with. And so the, the balance really shifts towards how effectively you can organize your software development practice. Um, increasingly, you know, the box isn't the business. The software is the business. Software on the box is the gateway to the services stream, the revenue stream, and so on. The ability to change that software, the ability to write that software well, the ability to um, pull together a, a great portfolio of apps for your device, um, or to reduce your costs of software iterations and, and, and easily address security issues and so on. That's, that's really what separates uh, uh, the successful projects from the unsuccessful projects. And uh, Ubuntu is making those things much easier for people to do. There's a huge pool of Ubuntu developer talent. 
Um, the tools are very well understood. The platform is well trusted. Um, uh, it's very easy to go to a manufacturer and say, look, I want to spin up a, a new IoT project and I'm going to use Ubuntu as the operating system. It, all the pieces in the pipeline are in place from the app all the way down to the board to make that uh, you know, an easy path. But isn't that the case with competitive uh, architectures as well, if architectures is the right word? Um, I, I certainly would say that you know, we, we live in a fiercely competitive world, and that's great. Uh, if you look at the public clouds, for example, uh, two-thirds or so of the public cloud workloads are on Ubuntu. So Ubuntu represents more of the sort of actively developed workloads than any other operating system, or in fact, all the other operating systems on the cloud put together. Um, that's not to say that there aren't, isn't great innovation happening there, but Ubuntu really has become the common currency of app development on Linux. And uh, that's certainly true in the cloud. We see every indication, in fact, that that's transferring into the next generation of IoT devices. Um, our partnerships with Dell, with Samsung, with Qualcomm, with Intel, um, all underscore what they're seeing in the market, which is that Ubuntu is the sort of platform of choice for people who are building that next generation of devices. All of their developers are familiar with it. They trust the brand. Um, uh, the economics are very clean. And, uh, and increasingly with Ubuntu Core and Snaps, we have really unique primitives to allow for very secure placement of apps on devices and the automatic updating of those apps, which is just a very unique proposition. Now, we know that there are no guarantees in life, but what's the guarantee that Ubuntu will keep up with the times and continue to update? Oh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, we have a 12-year track record of delivering a, a great stream of security updates. Um, that's really what we've built that reputation on. And the, the, the majority of the cloud runs on Ubuntu because we focus on that and we do that very well. Um, and it's a core commitment from us. It's, it's the thing that we, we take care of so that other people don't have to worry about it. Okay, that works for me. Uh, unfortunately, we have used up our five minutes because I'm sure we could talk about this subject for a long time. What a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. That was Mark Shuttleworth. He's the founder of Ubuntu, and he leads product design at Canonical, and I am Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. I hope you all have a great day.